Hello friends, this is Chrissy again at A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. For today's video, I will be sharing with you our read aloud and independent reader picks for the 2020-2021 school year. Everything I'm sharing in today's video, I have chosen for my three children, seven years of age and younger. I have two teenagers and I will be sharing all of the resources I have chosen for them later on this summer. So let's get into it. begin with read alouds and I'm sharing these in the order I plan to read them through the year. So if you saw my summer homeschool plans video you know that we're currently reading Pippi Longstocking. It reads the beloved story of a spunky young girl and her hilarious escapades. And to go along with it we're also working through the Pippi Longstocking family literature guide by Hearth Magic. In these literature guides there are guided activities in art, geography, handwork, recipes, nature studies, and more for each chapter of the book. So for a more in-depth look, go watch that uh, summer plan video after this one and I will link it down below. And to follow along the original book of Pippi Longstocking, we will also be reading Pippi in the South Seas. The back reads, are Pippi and her friends ready to say goodbye to Vija Vija Kuja? When her father, the king, sends for Pippi, she decides to take Tommy and Anika along. They find Kurakura Dut Island, a fantastic place. Children play marbles with pearls and Pippi even becomes Princess Pippi Loda. And to finish the summer season and probably carry us into fall, we will be reading through the Burgess Seashore book for children by Thornton W. Burgess. The back reads, familiar Burgess characters Danny Meadow Mouse, Jimmy Skunk, and Reddy Fox explore every nook and cranny of the shoreline and learn firsthand about the habits and habitats of spider crabs, sea cucumbers, sand eels, and that strangest of little fishes, the seahorse. So this is also published by the same company uh, who publishes our favorite coloring, educational coloring books, and that's Dover. Um, I believe each chapter is its own small adventure or story and I like that because there's no big pressure to finish from cover to cover. Although living in Florida and just a mile from the ocean, I feel like we can relate to this story year round. And at some point in the late fall, we will be moving on to Little House in the Big Woods. And with this read aloud, we will be working through another family literature guide. Uh, the Little House in the Big Woods, a family literature guide by Hearth Magic. Wolves and panthers and bears roam the deep Wisconsin woods in the late 1870s. In those same woods, Laura Ingalls lives with Pa and Ma and her sisters, Mary and baby Carrie, in a snug little house built of logs. Pa hunts and traps, Ma makes her own cheese and butter. At night, Pa's fiddle playing brings the family together around the cozy fire. Every year we postpone everything uh, for the Christmas season and do uh, something special for the holiday season and I'll share more of that as the time gets closer. But after the holiday season to get us through winter we will dive into the BFG by Roald Dahl. Human beings is not really believing in giants is they? Human beings is not thinking we exist. Our family loves the movie, um, and so I know that the kids are going to enjoy this. And to carry us into spring, uh, we will read Stuart Little by E.B. White. And we read Charlotte's Web by E.B. White last year, and it's been a favorite so far. We just love her writing. And so the back reads, he's one small mouse on one big adventure. Stuart's greatest adventure comes when his best friend, a beautiful little bird named Margolo, disappears from her nest. Determined to track her down, Stuart ventures away from home for the very first time in his life. He finds adventure aplenty, but will he find his friend? And to wrap up spring, we are going to come back and finish The Secret Garden. It says when orphaned Mary Lennox comes to live at her uncle's great house on the Yorkshire Moors, she finds it full of mysterious secrets. 
The garden surrounding the odd property are Mary's escape as she explores every inch of them, all except for the mysterious walled-in locked garden. Then one day, Mary discovers a key. Could it open the door to the garden? This is one of the longer uh, children literature books. There are 27 chapters. And so this past spring, we made it through a little bit more than halfway along with the family literature guide from Hearth Magic. I did make a video about it. Um, so I will also link that down below so you can go watch it. I found this short version of Anne of Green Gables, which like The Secret Garden, um, is one of the longer ch uh, children's literature books. So I thought we can ease our way into it with this uh, and then maybe try out the original the following year. Uh, it says, Anne Shirley is hot-tempered, melodramatic, impulsive, accident-prone, and one of the best-loved literary characters in the world. From her feud with Gilbert to near drowning in the pond, Anne's classics adventures come to life for a whole new generation in this adaptation of Lucy Maud Montgomery's Anne of Green Gables. <laughs> Moving on to independent readers, Little Bear, and this is published by I Can Read Books. My now teenagers, um, I remember reading this uh, story to them and watching the show with them. Uh, Little Bear is a timeless classic uh, written in 1957. And the stories are just warm and playful as it's about friendships and family values. So each book has three uh, shorter stories in one and Bella is already reading this book and she and her younger siblings love it so much. I have three more books on the way. And by the way, this reader is level one. I have been wanting to give the good and the beautiful readers a try. And so I purchased this set, Luke and Lily of the Lighthouse. And there are two readers, Lily's Pumpkins and Luke's Adventures, uh, which Bella has started already. And so Luke and Lily are twins living in a lighthouse on Firefly Island. Their adventures are of rescuing a sea turtle, uh, growing a garden, and making new friends. I like that the font is big and as you can see the illustrations are lovely and bold and beautiful. This series incorporates a variety of compound words and other literacy principles. The reading level for this box set is level 1B. When you purchase the box set, it also includes a compound words matching game. So there are two separate sets in here, uh, blue cards and red cards uh, to play. So just as traditional memory match, you lay the picture down uh, in four by four rows and take turns making matches, which in turn makes a compound word. Now transitioning from level 1b to a level 2 reader and the next one I chose is Mouse Tales again published by I Can Read and this is about a Papa mouse uh, whose seven little mouse boys ask for a bedtime story and so Papa does even better than that he tells seven stories one for each boy so there are seven short stories in this one book and just another sweet and whimsical classic uh, these are bedtime stories uh, but they just pick fit perfectly for us because my hubby is actually the storyteller in the family he tells the most wonderful stories to our littles at bedtime and so this book is a dedication to our own storytelling papa the frog and toad collection which are three level two frog and toad books and as you can see my theme or picks for bella's readers are just classic story enchanting and uh, whimsical stories to foster a love for literature and it's also important for us to provide our children with um, literature or reading that promotes good morals and family values and just examples of loving relationships and frog and toad are a good example of true friendship a friend gifted us this Osborne re uh, Reader Level 2, and we don't own any other Osborne Readers, so I'm excited for Bella to give this a try. Another classic tale, Little Red Riding Hood. 
And lastly, we picked up our first of many, I expect, Zoe and Sassafras. This is Dragons and Marshmallows, and I believe is the first in the series. This book is going to be our reading goal for Bella for the end of the new school year. So by the end of the year, we'd like for her to be able to read this independently. Uh, to gain confidence, we might start off with using it as a shared reader. So she'll read a paragraph and I read the next. But I am excited to share these with her and just watch her achieve a new goal. And so what's neat about this series is that each story series features a new magical animal with a problem that must be solved using science. There isn't a set formula for each book. Zoe sometimes needs to run experiments, while other times she needs to investigate a mystery, and yet other times she needs to do research.